Welcome back to Dream League Season 5. And after a short break, we're here in the middle of our second series of the night. No Diggity, Team Empire. And it was Team Empire that took the first game off of No Diggity. And double Bubble didn't work. No, <laughs> Double Bubble double has bubble fallen. Work? Well, it's pretty Dream simple. I mean, <laughs> Seb went over a lot of the really strong points in game. I think the Venge was a, a big thing. You yeah. know, not having it on their team and, you know, the functionality it has with the lineup, why it's good against it. And another reason, too, in just like adding to his point is when you play a lineup like that and you are trying to play the aggressor, right? Like you have Void, you have Enigma. Void always has to go first. Like he has to set up the Chronosphere for the Enigma. Yes. And if you don't have damage going into that sphere, then the sphere in the first place is already kind of like a waste, which is why he was also stressing the importance of the Zeus in the lineup. So you have the situation where it's like, all right, Kezu needs to go in, hit a good sphere, hope that, you know, they waste a swap, because that, that also has to happen. Yeah. And then, like, you need to Zeus ulti on top of it so Bat doesn't find the Zeus during the team fight. And then you have to, like, somehow still hit a good black hole without the Venge swapping you. And it's, it's just, like, too many things that happen in a fight when you are behind. That's the issue. Okay, and that's in an open map fight. But if you're pushing into No Diggity's lineup, then it's different because obviously you're going to be more grouped up around the ramp sometimes. You might mm -hmm. overextend, you know, scan a lasso the creep. That was the best fight that had the whole game. Obviously, you can't expect that to happen, but mistakes do happen. And that's when No Diggity's lineup is the strongest and is also when Venge is even better defensively. And again, why he was talking about it so much. But they obviously didn't have a very good early game. Yeah. And Empire did not fall prey to what we saw some other teams do last week when they were playing. They tried to push into it too early and they would get wrecked by five men yeah. and then they eventually would lose the game because of one hero that just had better late game. But Empire didn't do that. They played a slow, steady game. They just eventually choked them out with just a massive gold lead and during the last fights, even though Yapsor hit a three-man hole, it just didn't matter. What do you think, Jake? They put all their stacks in the Slark, man. Can't do that. Dota's different now. It ain't five protect Ah, one. that was fine. They, he's they the only the hero who can farm the map. That's the problem. Yeah. Like, who else in that team besides, like, maybe Void can go outside of base and reliably farm against Beastmaster Batrider? Mm -hmm. Like, they can solo kill any hero on that team except for the Slark. So, Slark only gets farmed like that by virtue of the rest of the heroes. It's kind of like playing with a Naga. At some point, Naga is the only person who can leave the base if you're behind. And Naga just soaks all the farm because sh she's the only hero that can leave the I base. Get it. Yeah. That's really what was the problem. It wasn't that they put too much farm on Sark. It was that he was the only one who could hit creeps. I hear your four paragraph essay about why I was wrong, but they just should have picked Wraith King. And it would have been nice <laughs> and easy. Wraith King. One sentence. I that's think Sark was a good pick, but I, I think the, the greed was too much. I think yeah. that's what owned them the most. You said Wraith King for Team Empire, by the way, during the drafts. They both should have picked Wraith King. Great okay. hero, he's coming back. Hot okay. ticket, coming back. Uh, I believe our first replay is actually of a fight that, that you basically pointed out. There was a good Chronosphere. Mm -hmm. Yep. Uh, it was on top lane, uh, but there just was no damage. Let's start oh, with the pause. Right, so this one's interesting because See, I, I don't remember how long he had, but obviously when you're playing Slark and somebody has Vintage Review, your ulti debuff fades. So we can play it. Uh, we're going to see Mapashka walk in here. Yeah. And I guess it was pretty quick, actually. I didn't actually Demar. know right he away. He was invisible. Yeah, he, okay, that's why. He popped a bird when he didn't even know the arrow was there and then yeah. saw him and then roared. That's why. Okay, so he actually didn't have much time here. But as soon as this happens, very nice defensive nightmare. Sets up for a stun, but at this point, there's uh, no follow-up damage because a black hole comes out to stop Mapashka. And at this point, like the black hole Thanks. hits on two heroes, <laughs> which is pretty nice. <laughs> Thank you. But the problem with this is that Era has no mana. And Seb also hit on this during the game is that the Slark pretty much has to disengage to heal, has no mana. So when the Chronosphere comes out Swap. and like the Zeus yeah. ulti has already been used, we saw the swap on the afterlife as well. There's just no damage. Like everybody no hitting. one no one does any DPS. This era is stuck in there. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I mean, that actually looked like the team fight was going to go a different way. Ramsey's walks are... But Chronosphere has deep. absolutely no yeah. synergy with Slark. Right. That's a problem. Like, Kezu has to hit literally a perfect sphere for the Slark to be able to hit anyone. They have He's... to be on the outer edge, and that just didn't happen. So Yapsar had to use his ult defensively to save. It ends up resulting in a kill, but they end up losing Slark because Era gets mana burned at the start of the fight. Like, he, he goes back into the fight with, like, what, 10% mana? And then by the time the sphere ends, it's over. And at that point, like this is just watching cleanup. Yep. Your yep. your primary damage dealer is dead. Your ultis are down. And this is pretty much a stage in the game where even though Empire don't ultimately like straight up win here, this is where they had won the game. Yeah. Yeah. Like this is this is the last fight where No Diggity had any shot. Now there is a last fight where yeah. I believe I mean that uh, that was a fight where the where the Batrider 
got the wrong one. <laughs> he didn't have the matter. greatest lasso. Yeah. But but let's let's take a look at that because yeah. oh. let's assume. Sorry, production. We're going for a second. We're all leaning line. forward Great. preemptively. <laughs> uh, let's assume that this. Pause. Let's assume that this is an even fight. Is there? Is there like? Should they have won this fight if this wasn't basically gone? Oh I wish god! I if it was even, yeah, they probably would have crushed it. But the it. problem is at this point, Empire just has such a farm advantage. Mm -hmm. Is like they're not killing anybody inside a sphere anymore. Like they even scout out the bat rider. Like Quickfo yeah. was having really good awareness and just knowing, okay, I need to make sure that we don't get that. Uh, Get that initiation onto me, because if I die, then we're certainly not going to win the team fight. So, boom. Okay, the so goes in. the spear goes in. He only catches afterlife. Now he has yeah. to hope that this is going to get swapped. Yes, this is the only way that this is going to work out. Well, yeah. If they defensively swap, it would be a misplay unless afterlife was getting really tunnel vision with damage. That's the only thing. And the other part too is you can just banish him as well. You can just astral. So it's actually yeah. better to astral here, which he does. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So he astrals. Not needed then. And that means that the swap is still there for the black hole, just in case. But as Seb mentioned <laughs> a little bit later in this replay, like he tried to click Yapsor, obviously. Yeah. And just missed. So we can play it on. Yep. Like he realizes his mistake. Yapsor popped his, his BKB. And then we see a swap. And then as soon as that swap comes, Woo! it's like, boom, black, black hole, hole straight away. And Fiend's Grip on Scan on the meantime It, it as was well. actually so fast that I almost wonder if he did it on purpose. <laughs> like, I don't, I watched that and I was like, okay, that was insanely fast. If he's actually got reactions like that, I would be very surprised. Because, like, it's literally, yeah, he's casting it before the swap even goes off. So he just thought, okay, I need to use my ulti now. Yeah. It is almost, you know. I mean, beautiful stuff, though. I, at, at this point in the team fight, it looks like things could definitely turn around. If but only they yeah. had more damage, they could have yeah. they could have helped. The heroes are just too farmed. You wanna know why that one didn't work out? This guy did right here. Yeah. Yeah. There's reasons of dying, but in all honesty, it's a, a perfect storm has to occur for No Diggity to defend this push, even with superior high ground. Like. They're too far behind. Empire played the methodical game. They didn't try to push in too early. You could very easily see that fight going the wrong way if you jump in and you're not like 20k ahead. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like you could lose that quite easily. Let's see uh, what's going to happen in the next game as we were already in the draft. Game number two here between No Diggity and Team Empire. And